Welcome back to Mushroom Adventures. In this episode, I'm going to talk all about how to grow the lion's mane mushroom. Now, lion's mane is also called old man's beard. You'll see why. Um, also, pom pom blanc and a variety of other names that's marketed under. But pretty much everyone calls it lion's mane that uh, grows it. It's classification name would be Heresium, and specifically, the one I'm doing is called Heresium Americanum, the American lion's mane. Now, it differs from some other ones. I'll get into the differences. But as you can see, I got a couple of holes cut in this bag that's growing out. Now, in several days, this clump right here will turn into a large kind of a ball with spikes, you'd say. Um, but hopefully, actually, it'll be more like a uh, spread out, uh, not quite like a ball, but multiple branches of spikes that come out, because that's what I'm going for. Um, but different varieties grow differently. I'll get into that. So let's take a look at the varieties of this lion's mane and how I got to this point of it growing out of these bags. Heresia marinaceus is the most common of the lion's mane strains. You can see that its shape is much more of a single ball, like a pom-pom. That's where the name pom-pom blunt comes from. Now, all the different species of Heresium vary in how many branches they make and the uh, length of the spines, as well as the distribution of the spines. Here you can see another strain called Heresium Americanum. This is the strain that I'm using. The Americanum strain is a little bit more branched, um, but not too much branched. You can tell from my video that it's still pretty much one big clump. Here is Heresium abitus. Now you can see that it's quite a bit more branched. Now, one of the benefits of having it branched is that you can separate the, the chunks of the mushroom, tear it apart more easily. Also too, it doesn't hold so much moisture in the center of it, which can cause it to spoil in refrigeration. Here is Heresium coralloides. Now this was the strain that I originally ordered, um, but unfortunately it had a contamination in it. And I'm currently in progress of trying to get a uh, clean culture from the culture bank that I ordered it from. So hopefully that'll all work out. But you can see it's pretty much the the most branched of all the uh, available strains of Heresium. Very uh, almost pine tree like. Here is Heresium serratum. I don't believe you can buy this strain but I'm showing it just because it has a unique look to it where instead of branches that have the spines it's almost like shelves that come out and then the spines come down. Here's a mycologist who has picked a very large specimen of Heresium. You can see that although it's very large, they do get even bigger than that. And you see it's also off of a fallen, big old, maybe oak, maybe pine tree. But Heresium species are known to grow on both. So next time in your woods, be on the lookout for these. It's been about, oh, four days. And you can see the lion's mane has been getting larger and larger. It grows pretty fast. You can see where it once was more of a solid white clump. It's starting to diverge into smaller and smaller branches. Those branches will eventually become the teeth that droop down. Now you see here that I have this one arranged that the there's one clump of mushroom at the bottom and another clump at the top, while this one has it at a diagonal. And I think it's going to be better to use the diagonal approach because you can get, get more fruits in there in the same line. Um, and one's not directly above the other, so when you're missing them, the bottom one's not getting dripped on more. Um, because you do have to watch the moisture content with the lion's mane because it will soak up water to the point where you could actually wring it out like a wet towel if you wanted to 
and you don't want to do that because you'll greatly reduce the shelf life and storage. We'll go check out the ones over here. They're all coming in nicely. Now, I gave these bags a second mix because the, the bonds were a little wet. Um, and then shortly after recolonized, that's when I cut the holes. And I think it's actually beneficial uh, with a lion's mane, especially if you're doing it in the bags like this, to uh, give it a mix uh, like a couple days before you would open it up. Just, just wait long enough that everything regrows back together, but then when you cut the holes, it'll prompt the mushroom to fruit out the holes before it starts fruiting in the top of the bag and around the bag because it definitely will uh, try to take up all the excess space just like the king oysters. But not as badly, so it's not so much of a, a fight to get it to uh, come out where you want. You can see really there's not hardly any growth coming up the top of this one. It's all been diverged to the main fruits, so that's good. Another thing too, I think, um, what I've seen people do is just stack bag on top of bag and roll and fold the top over. That way I'm going to get uh, uh, two rows per shelf. That will be able to fit a lot more in there. Um, but I'll do that on the next, next batch that comes down here. So let's check in in a few days again when these are all finished up. You can see that these first lines mains bags have really gotten massive. It's hanging all the way down about four inches below the bag. And gosh, it's probably about uh, six, seven inches across. And it's still growing, believe it or not. Now these sawdust blocks are my 30% cottonseed meal recipe with uh, two pounds of alfalfa in a batch. And so these really like it. I'm also going to try some uh, of my king oysters and lion's mane on four pounds of alfalfa and a reduced amount of sawdust to see if a higher alfalfa recipe helps. I think it will. And you can see these smaller ones that are diagonally organized are doing well but it should only be uh, another day or two before this one starts making its uh, teeth to hang down and only want to let it go till it's about one centimeter length of the teeth otherwise what will happen is the entire fruit will start to turn a yellowish tint and it will begin to soften up and it won't last as long in storage and probably doesn't have as good as a texture. So there is a, a definitely a, a prime time to pick it as well. So let's check back in when the spines have fully grown out to the proper length that we're ready to harvest.